What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here to ask and answer the question, how good is Stone Crusher for soloing? This, like my last How Good Is video, is another weird episode, because this class is often considered a really good support class, as well as a really good soloing class. So today, I'll be trying to look at how it, well it does both of those aspects, but I'm probably going to be glossing over a lot of the support type stuff, so for that I apologize. As you guys probably know by now, this series is where I do a comprehensive overview of the class in question. This includes how to obtain the class, what enhancements to use, what weapon range to use, what the abilities and passives do, how to use the class, how well it serves its designated purpose, and finally, I wrap things up with my own opinion on the said class. If you'd like any other classes to receive this treatment, then let me know in the comment section down below, on Twitter or on Discord, links for all that are in the description. Either way though, let's start off the video by going over how to obtain Stone Crusher. To purchase Stone Crusher as a free player, you need three factions ranked 10, Mythsong, Arkengrove, and Bright Oak. Each of these factions have their own methods for farming them to rank 10, so I won't get into that now, but I'll leave a link in the description to the Stone Crusher merge wiki page where you can read all about the finer details on how to get the class. Alternatively, you can purchase this class for 2000 ACs from the class shop at Battleon. For enhancements, most people like to use Full Wizard. However, it was brought to my attention by my friend Migo that this class potentially had some advantages to using full luck, or at least some luck enhancements. Now keep in mind, I'm mainly focusing on soloing with this video, so with that in mind, I measured the DPS of Stone Crusher with varying degrees of luck and wizard enhancements. So if we look at the raw DPS numbers, then it's clear that wizard enhancements are better. However, mana management and health regeneration seems to be better with luck. Migo noticed that Magnitude, an effect on Stone Crusher's abilities, which helps with your health and mana regeneration, it seemed to activate more often with luck enhancements. This is really strange, as Magnitude is supposed to have a fixed chance of activating, so I'm really not sure what's up with that, but just it just straight up seemed to activate more often. And in, that was just in our two particular test cases, so you guys might even have it different. Not entirely sure, it might just be a bug. So, with that in mind, I guess if you want DPS, it's best to go with Wizard, so that's probably the best way to go, but for the off chance that you need some better mana or health regeneration, then it's, it's good to keep in mind that uh, luck enhancements are going to increase your chances of getting Magnitude. Weapon range is super simple with this class. A stable or mid-stable weapon is generally fine, whereas a super unstable will yield less DPS than usual. Stone Crusher has two rank 4 passives, and does not have a rank 10 passive. Its two rank 4 passives are an increase in your haste by 20%. Now that's a huge increase, and haste basically affects your ability cooldowns, so keep that in mind. And your other rank 4 passive increases your endurance by 20%. Ability number 1 is a standard auto attack, completely and utterly standard, 0 mana cost, 2 second cooldown, um, and doesn't have any extra effects. Ability number 2 is called Stalagmite. It consumes 15 mana and has a 6 second cooldown. Causes a Stalagmite to erupt out of the ground at your opponent's feet, dealing damage and crippling their defenses. Applies Bruise to the target, increasing all incoming damage by 8% for 8 seconds, stacks up to 5 times. Has a 25% chance to apply Magnitude for 2 seconds. If Magnitude is applied, immediately has a 50% chance to stun for 4 seconds. So this ability essentially, uh, it's just a stacking thing. You really don't need, don't need to, don't need to worry too much about the magnitude thing. It's just nice when it is applied, but yeah, like a, it's just, it's just a nice thing that you don't have to worry about. It really makes everything sound really complicated, but just focus on the fact that this ability does damage and um, stacks up an effect which increases your own damage output. Ability number three is called Echoing Earth. It consumes 25 mana, has an 18 second cooldown. Harness the residual energy from great battles from ages past trapped beneath the surface. Applies resonance and dissonance, which increases haste and crit chance by 30% for the caster and up to 5 friendly targets, while improving your own mana regain. This lasts for 10 seconds. This ability also has a 25% chance to apply Magnitude for 2 seconds. If Magnitude is applied, mana costs are immediately reduced for you and your party by 20% for 10 seconds. So, this ability is kind of a bit more complicated. Basically what you need to remember is this ability is does not do damage, it's just like an effect, and the effect will increase your haste and crit chance by 30% 
and up and for your uh, friendly targets for 10 seconds. So that's a haste and crit chance increase for 10 seconds for you and your your allies. Magnitude, again, 25% chance to be applied. Um, if that is applied, mana costs are immediately reduced for you and your party. So essentially, this is just a haste and mana regain ability, and also you got some crit chance bonus in there as well. Ability number four is called Land's Embrace. It consumes 25 mana and has a 12 second cooldown. Draw upon the strength within the earth to conjure a barrier of stone. Applies shielded, which reduces incoming damage for the caster and five friendly targets by 50%, and applies a small hot for four seconds. Has a 25% chance to apply magnitude for two seconds. If magnitude is applied, immediately reduces all incoming damage by 80% and doubling the hot for the caster for four seconds. So what does this ability do? Well. It applies the effect, which will reduce the incoming damage by 50%, and applies a hot, and that's for five friendly targets. So you're getting a hot and a damage reduction to yourself, um, which is great. You know, that's great for survivability. Now, magnitude is a bit more complicated here because um, it has a 25% chance to apply magnitude for two seconds. So that's a two second um, reduction to the incoming damage by 80%, and it doubles the caster's hot for four seconds, so that there's two different timings there that you need to concentrate on. So the, basically, this ability will give the impression that there's a lot of effects going on at once if magnitude is applied, um, but it's really not that much to keep your head, wrap your head around. Just keep in mind, reduce your incoming damage, get a hot, and occasionally you'll get a really big hot and re a really big reduction to incoming damage. It's pretty simple when you really look at it. Finally, ability number five is called Endless Fisher. It consumes 35 mana and has a 30 second cooldown. Rip open the ground beneath your opponent's feet, dealing massive damage. Also applies Aftershock, a dot that grows stronger with each attack that hits your opponent for 30 seconds. Has a 25% chance to apply Magnitude for 2 seconds. If Magnitude is applied, the target becomes caught in a sinkhole, reducing crit rate and haste by 40% for 8 seconds. Now, uh, what does this ability do? Well, it, it does massive damage, so it's a big nuke. Um, and it applies an effect called Aftershock. Now, Aftershock lasts 30 seconds, and once you apply Aftershock, it starts a dot. And that dot will grow stronger each time you hit your opponent successfully. And so, and that lasts 30 seconds. And this ability has a cooldown slightly shorter than 30 seconds because of that 20% haste boost. So you can actually loop that. Um, so yeah, you uh, really just want to be looping this ability as much as you can to keep that dot going. So what does Magnitude do on this ability? Well, it'll... Uh, Cause your target to become caught in a sinkhole, so you'll see the like the name the name sinkhole pop up. Um, now that reduces the enemy's crit rate and haste by 40% for eight seconds. Now the wiki has also got some notes here um, that are talking about stuff that magnitude does on this ability that is not actually in the description. So it says if magnitude is applied, it deals 900% spell DPS and applies aftershock, so you get a big damage boost there. Um, and also if magnitude is applied, aftershock deals three times its normal damage, so your dot will suddenly spike really high um, and it'll seem completely random because the description of this ability doesn't actually say so. So it's really uh, quite confusing when you're using this class to think, you know, why did my dot just spike really weirdly and then go back down again? It's a, it's confusing, but uh, it's because of, uh, it's because of um, magnitude, which is not actually talked about in the description for some reason, but yeah, that's it. So for actually how to use Stone Crusher, it obviously does depend on the context. Um, the great thing about explaining how to use a class from my perspective for support is that each support situation differs too much. So I can't really give you guys solid, you know, facts and advice for support. However, my advice to you is kind of just treat support situations the same as you'd treat soloing situations with this class. Um, and so, well, how do I, what do I do when I'm in a solo, soloing situation? It's quite easy. First of all, number five, ability five, you want to keep that dot up. So just use five as soon as it's active and make sure that dot does not run out. Secondly, uh, three and four, their effects are really powerful. And uh, if you get magnitude on either of those of those abilities, it's going to really, really be quite good, you know? And so keep those abilities applied as well. And uh, what's left? Well, it's just ability two. And uh, it's just, it just doesn't really consume much mana. And uh, it's it's just a bit of damage, and it's good. So just keep keep spamming that.
you don't want to get that uh, damage boost effect to run out either. So, in conclusion, mash your keyboard, and if you start running out of mana, you can slowly sort of, I guess, uh, decide on which abilities you don't want to spam. Um, but my advice to you is probably prioritize three and four, those two abilities, over other other abilities in the class. But yeah, it's, I mean, I've found in my personal experience that I don't run out of mana, even when I mash my keyboard, so just mash your keyboard. It's, there's no there's no combos or anything like that, just button mash and you'll be fine. Um, just be a bit wary of uh, certain effects running out. Um, you know, just read your ability descriptions and just make sure you're uh, aware of what's running out and what's not running out and stuff. And yeah, you'll be good. It's really not too hard to use this class. And uh, when you really look into it, it's not too hard to wrap your head around what it, what each ability really specifically does anyway. So with all that in mind, how well does Stone Crusher ser serve its designated purpose? Uh, so that's an interesting question actually, because Stone Crusher sort of has two designated purposes. It is an amazing soloing class, but it's also an amazing support class. And it's not just like, yeah, it does both those things good. It does both those things really well. Um, obviously, there have been a lot of classes that have come out semi-recently that have sort of been really good um, soloing classes. So it's not quite as good as it once was. Um, there, are, Its DPS is lower than uh, a good few of the best soloing classes, but it's up there. It's definitely in the conversation if you're talking about, you know, say top five soloing classes or whatever, you know, it, you you put it near the top. Um, and in terms of support classes, well, I think it it's probably one of the the best support classes in the game, which is, uh, it, it, so yeah, it does both those things quite well. Um, if you were to split this class into its two aspects, then you'd have two solid classes, but if you combine them both, it, it's really a no-brainer. If you're looking, for, if you don't have any existing support or soloing classes, and you have 2,000 ACs to spend, this class is probably the most value for money you can get in terms of a 2,000 AC class. Um, uh, and I guess Lightcaster is kind of a, a, a really a no-brainer as well, though, because it's 1,000 ACs, and that's a... Uh, it's a really good support and soloing class as well, but you know, it's Stone Crush is really worthwhile for 2000 ACs as well, compared to some of the other options out there. But in terms of um, farming for the class as well, it's uh, you require three factions rank 10, so it's not a it's not an easy farm. But uh, but all three of those factions are quite easy to rank up, I think, from memory. Um, and so yeah, it's it's worthwhile. It definitely does its uh, purpose quite well. And finally, we've got the last portion of the video. This is the portion of the video where I interject my own opinion into into the conversation, and uh, man, you guys you guys should know by now. You guys should know what to expect when it comes to really powerful classes. I don't like it. I don't like Stone Crusher. It's um not very complicated. Uh, it's quite a basic class, you know. In turn, it, it seems what annoys me is Stone Crusher seems like a cool, complicated sort of interesting class on the surface, but it's just got really long descriptions because of that friggin' magnitude bullshit that happens. So the descriptions are really deceiving because they're super long, but they're really not filled with much uh, information, and the abilities are really not that complicated. Um, and it's really not fun to use. It's a button mash class, and it's not even like it's a fun button mash class. You know, certain classes can be fun for button mashing if they have short cooldowns, but this class doesn't have that. Uh, well, it's just kind of mediocre in terms of that, but um, yeah, I mean, pure utility, like in terms of just wanting a class that's good at what you want it for, then yeah, I mean, of course, Stone Crush is great, but uh, in terms of um, whether this class is uh, is a like, do I think it's a good class in terms of um, what well, it being fun and it, uh, I guess, bringing the the class system in the game further. It definitely takes the class system two steps back. It's the same as Void High Lord. Void High Lord is too powerful for its own good, and so is Stone Crusher. Both Stone Crusher and Void High Lord suffer from the problem where they both both the classes try and do way too much, and they're just too good at it. Like it's they just it's a it's power creep, right? It's power creep. Stone Crusher is the one of the best support classes in the game, and it's got some of the best DPS in the game. What? Like it's, ugh. it's it just it just seems backwards to me. That's all. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, if you want a class that's really good, then yeah, Stone Crusher is the class for you. I mean, I'm I'm sure there are other options out there. It's it doesn't. It's not like it stands out like Void Hilo does, I guess, um, as being like fucking amazing. But at the same time. 
there's really only one other class in the game that does support and soloing so well, and that's Lightcaster. Lightcaster is cheaper though, uh, but you can't farm for Lightcaster, whereas you can farm for Stonecrusher, so there's that. That's that's the information for the video, guys. I hope you guys ha have enjoyed this. I apologize if my voice is a bit weird or if I sound a bit, bit, uh, bit shaky or not on, not quite on my game today. It's uh, it's been quite a while since my last video, as you guys probably know, um, and I'm sure you'll be commenting about that. But uh, either way, next video will probably be Q and A. Um, the video after that will be a either a Glacial Berserker video or a Eternal Chronomancer video, depends on what I uh, what I get around to doing. But um, yeah. You guys can look forward to that. Um, as always, leave a like if you haven't already, or if you enjoyed the video. You guys should leave a like if you enjoyed, not if you, not, not just because you, you feel like you're obligated to. I mean, you know, you know how it is. Either way, no. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.